right, yeah, we are going to draw a conclusion from a conditional statement. So first things first, what is a conditional statement? So a conditional statement is often also called an if-then statement. So we, in symbol, we will see this as if P, then Q, right? We see that symbolically there with P, right arrow, Q. If P, then Q. So we can uh, make some conclusions. Okay, so given the following statements, what conclusion can we make? First, if Lane eats chicken, then he will have an allergic reaction. Second statement, Lane ate chicken nuggets. Now, sometimes it helps if we think this through symbolically. So Lane eats chicken would be our statement P. We'll have an allergic reaction would be Q. So this would be if P, then Q, symbolically. Now, in the second statement, Lane ate chicken nuggets. Well, eating chicken is P. So this statement is just P. So think this through. If we know that if P occurs, it leads to the statement of Q. So therefore, in statement two, we know that P has occurred. Lane ate chicken. Therefore, the conclusion would be Q, also, no, uh, let's not use an arrow, Q, also known as Lane, will have an allergic reaction, right? Which makes sense, right? So this is the conclusion. And this is a true statement, right? So if Lane eats chicken, he's going to have an allergic reaction. That's what happens when people are allergic to things. So therefore, in the next statement, we're like, oh, look, Lane's eating chicken nuggets. Now we just wait for the allergic reaction to happen because if he eats chicken, the allergic reaction happens. That's the conclusion with that conditional statement. All right. In the next one, we are going to create. So now we're going to use some creative information here. So we're going to create two statements that result in the conclusion, Sally walks on the beach. Now, we could come up with like, I don't know, an infinite number of two statements that, you know, a combo two statements that result in Sally walks on the beach. So first things first, um, let me find my, my text box here to see if this works. Yep, that's, that's gonna work great. Okay, so first we need like an if then statement. So I'm gonna say, you know, if Sally goes on vacation, then she walks on the beach. I mean, this is my life, right? If I'm going on vacation, I want there to be sand. Uh, that's just, you know, part of my my life. Like my life, I want I want sand between my toes. Okay, so there's my first statement. If Sally goes on vacation, then she walks on the beach. It's a conditional. So okay, there's statement one. So now let's go to statement two. Oh, what's wrong with this text box? What? Statement two, Sally goes on vacation. Okay, so think about this. And again, there's like 500 other, well, more than that. There's an infinite amount of ways we can do this. But if she goes on vacation, then she walks on the beach. If P, then Q. So my second statement of she goes on vacation is P. Well, I know if P happens, it leads to Q, which is Sally walks on the beach. So it just kind of gives you an idea of like how you can pull these things together. If P, then Q. If you are given then a second statement, which implies P, it's always going to lead to Q, right? That's the basis of a conditional statement. P occurs, Q has to occur. So if Sally goes on vacation, then she walks on the beach. So therefore, if Sally goes on vacation, the conclusion would be she walks on the beach.